Did you guys watch AW last night? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go over this. I don't know the ratings. Can you put it up, uh, Joe? You're, yeah, the quarter hours are up. Oh, they are, they'll pull them up. Yep. <laughs> what was their total overall number? 762? Like, yeah. Yeah, Tony was like celebrating last week because you know, they, they got a bump with the... The, the show of the footage, but this week has been right back to you know. seven six. Well, let yeah. me see what did the rating. Obviously, the first one always does the lead in. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, so okay, so let's go over this. So Ma Moxley cut the promo, okay, and um, he's chatting. It's kind of weird because bro, they're they're doing this like the match is Osprey against Danielson, and everybody's acting like a baby face here, kind of like there's no heat. Like Mo Moxley's challenging Osprey's. Your know, buddies, and they're, they're kind of like, you know, like, I, I don't and know. Hobbs. Yeah, and this is just some Here, Here's what I don't understand, okay? Mm -hmm. See, Joe, mm -hmm. if you can tell me this, or Disco, all right? Or even mm -hmm. play devil's advocates. Can somebody mm -hmm. explain to me when, how, or why did Mox turn babyface? I have no idea on any of those things. And my secondary question is, because if he's challenging Hobbs, and Hobbs is in the Don Callis family, okay? Mm -hmm. Why do they feel at AW it's not important to explain to us when people change from face to heel like they did not too long ago, Chris Jericho, where he was in Canada and out of the blue for no reason, I think Kenny Omega was with him, he cut a baby face promo and turned himself baby. And now when we get to him later on in the show, you're going to see what he does. And I'm like, why, when, how, where? I don't understand why this guy, why they want to explain to us why he's a face now. Right. I think to, for, for Tony, when he was growing up as a fan and stuff like that, if he, and, and we know some of this to be true, if he was a big ECW fan and fan of Hammond's booking and then Ring of Honor and PWG, the thing that those three have in common is that a lot of the characters are presented as shades of gray or even in the Attitude Era that happened a lot. Now, there's really probably nothing more valuable than a, than a heel turn that gets thoughty. It's really riled up, you know? So you lose that when you just have shades of gray. But I think he probably looks at it like he, maybe even like all Japan, all Japan, you know, Kabashi versus Kawada or whatever. It's just it's just two great wrestlers. Right. There's not going to be any heel shenanigans. And maybe that's what Tony likes. So he doesn't explain because to him, Moxley is still the same character. Jericho is still the same character, no matter who they're facing. All right. So we go. So uh, how's that? We, well, I'm, <laughs> just used, I'm just used to and I think it's easier and it's better for the feud. If you explain why some bone a nice guy all of a sudden is it or vice versa there's no excuse to not explain the things to just assume that like you're know, like yeah that's yeah, just that's missing out. Reason, right that's his reason for not explaining it's not a good reason you're so not mercedes, giving anyone an, uh, a reason to get invested if there's no emotional component so mercedes bonet backstage and i guess when they hired this jim peppermint to she, she's scripting all of her promos because this sounded like a she sounded like she was reading off cue cards um so she assumed it was Julia Hart that attacked her last week and then said maybe it was someone who wanted her to think it was Hart. Then Monet said she would be watching the mixed tag team match and said there's a price to pay. Well, it's a price to pay when you mess with her. What did you think about this Mercedes Monet promo? I heard she's getting $10 million a year. Is that accurate? I don't know. Hope not. <laughs> well, I, I keep hearing that number $10 million. Is that $10 million for the term of the contract or $10 million a year? There's no way it could be $10 million a year, dude. Well, so Kata's getting $4.5 million. Right, there's no. I don't know. I, I I I wonder what that locker room dynamic is in that company where these people are getting bank. I mean, well, you paid extensive amounts of money. The, the ratings haven't done a thing. You know, I wonder what that that's like for the locker room morale at that place. You know, when, well, when the thing is, the you spent there. you spent a lot of money. We don't know how much on Okada, right? Mm -hmm. He means absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. You've spent a lot of money on Osprey. I won't say he means nothing, but so far you haven't gotten and maybe you haven't, toward, you haven't got any return back yet at yeah, all. You haven't really gotten a return on him, which you should be getting a return immediately. We'll, we'll talk about that. Probably been on Monet's probably been the biggest failure of all. Another bad promo. Do do you not see that she's not good on the mic? No, she's she live. She, she more, never more, was more backstage. We've been disco and I have been saying this about her since she was in WWE. We like her. We like her look. We like her wrestling, her swag. She's not good on the mic, and she comes off like a heel. Well, plus, okay, so so let's get to the match. Uh, well, her hopefully. salary her salary is, um, the Observer reported that um, it's considerably less than the five million a year that's rumored, but then this other report here says it's 10 mil for three to five years with an opt-out after three. 
Okay. All right. So 10, 10 million over the course of the contract. So, all right. So let's go. The, Copeland and Willow Knight, you'll take on Brody King and Julia Hart. Um, bro, this is, they're, they're doing the same. Okay. There, there's two identical angles going on and they're not really explaining it or they're, you know, whatever. So Willow Nightingale comes out with Chris Statlander, but they're Stokely Hathaway is still with them. He's the heel manager at Willow and Chris Statlander, baby chase. And th- there's still has not been a logical explanation why they would still be hanging out with Stokely Hathaway because you just can't get like, they, they're coming across as stupid baby faces. Like they don't know that Stokely Hathaway is a jerk. Right. Um, but basically, this is a typical, you know, a mixed tag. Hart wrapped a chain around her fist and hit Willow with it while the referee's back was turned. And then Hart put Willow in the heartless, and the referee called for the bell. Um, once again, the, the referee got buried here again. Uh, but Brody King and Julia Hart go over in only eight minutes and 45 seconds. And after the match, Mercedes Monet makes her entrance with a chair in her hand, which caused Hart to exit the ring. Then Monet looked at Willow while holding the chair. Then Coble returned to the ring, and Monet dropped the chair. And then Monet shook hands. So, what you see about this incredible drama at the end of the match? Well, I so, I read somewhere Hart is hurt. If she's hurt, why you have her in the match unless she's not that hurt? Right. I I can't believe she's the champion. She doesn't have a star factor to me. But okay, I think I've said that enough. Bad uh, facial expressions. She doesn't have any facial expressions. Yeah, she doesn't know how to sell. I mean, she she's right. very still green. I don't know why they put the title on her. But right. um, as usual, they don't let anybody get heat. And that Monet came out and ran her out. Right. I'm I'm not invested in this so far. So Julia Hart injured, seeming it says seemingly injured her shoulder towards the end of a match on Rampage. Um, it led some people to believe her matches, upcoming matches, might be in jeopardy. But according to Fightful, AEW expected Hart to be medically cleared for her upcoming bout, which she was the tag match. So it must not be, you know, doesn't keep her out of the ring. You know, what I think about um about Copeland. They just quick, send her because- to NXT. Nothing. <laughs> They, uh, the, there's always uh, a little train of people that no matter who AEW signs, they, they go after them. They bury them. Oh, what, what, they came here to coast or they came here and they suck. You know, the thing like, or remember when Booker T had a TNA run and that was the consensus area was like, Booker looks like he's just here to coast and collect his money, you know? And he's even said that later on down the line. But Copeland to me seems like a guy who's really working hard. He's really trying to help AEW and, and either fill it back up or leave an impact and all that. I don't see any coasting from him, you know, and a lot of people want to bury him, but I think he's doing, he's doing good work. No, he's doing fine for what they give him. He goes out there yeah. performs it like with, with yeah. fire and passion. Yeah. Like yep. he doesn't want, he doesn't want his, his stock to go down. Right. Like to put him best stuff. It's like, what am I going to do? Go through the motions. It's like, look like if I was in a terrible segment, he's trying to make him best of it. So you got to give him more credit. Right. Uh-huh. So Renee, Renee Piquet had a sit down with Joe. Joe says for, will keep standing up, up after he knocks him down and call him a punching bag. And he called Joe Beaver. That was a great was, line, by yeah. the way. Joe said he was worried that his property was in the wrong hands. And Joe said Swerve is a choke artist who's come short in all of his title matches and said he will cement his legacy as the greatest AEW champion. And Joe said Swerve is a choke artist and he'll be the one who choke Swerve out on Sunday. So it's choke artist. Let me ask you a question. So they, they position. Can you take that chart down, Joe? So they position... Um, Moxley is the toughest guy in the company, correct? I guess. No? Uh, yeah, I guess he is. Kind of, okay. So he goes out there, bro, and he just doesn't seem, even though he's got a good mic work and he's mm-hmm. very believable, him, he doesn't come up as a the toughest guy or one of the toughest right. guys there. He kind of look, you know what he reminds me of a little bit of like a broke man's Jason Statham. Right. <laughs> he looks, you know yeah. Trying to act like really tough and, you know, right. but bro, to me, Joe comes off as the toughest guy in that f- promotion. I agree. And even, yeah. And uh, and even though just visually, they don't really do nothing with this guy. Hobbs probably second. Who would it be in your in your eyes? I know there's a lot of little kids and young guys that do not look tough at all. But if you had to pick like the three toughest guys there, who would they be to you in your eyes? Uh, Hobbs, Joe, and Wardlow. Jobs, jo- Hobbs, Joe, and Wardlow. Okay. You, Joe? Joe, Cesaro, or uh, or uh Claudio, I, I'd say I put Moxley on there. Yeah. All right. So they cut the, the, so new, back- the newly crowned, as I'm sure you guys are, really care about the newly crowned New Japan World Champion John Moxley. Very prestigious. So video package aired of FTR versus Young Bucks ladder match at Dynasty, and they show backstage with Matt Jackson and Nicholas Jackson, or with Tony Khan, and he told him to cut the segment. Then they were uh, the Bucks and Ok Okada were shown, and Matthew said he was sorry they had to cut FTR segment, so he made sure it ends up on social media. Then Okada said Pac won't make it to Dynasty and referred to him as a dead man. Then the Capitol pulled back and showed Tony Khan seated there in the, in the grill position just doing nothing. Um, 
Oh no, he said music now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> So then they go to the six man, and you know, I guess uh, so Okada's wrestling pack coming up, so they had to have a six man here. And they did a thing where um, uh, Gar- Garcia got, took the fall. At least he didn't think he was yeah, They put him in, in a ladder like a sandwich. Yeah. And then they, then they were going to put him in a ladder like after the match. And, and, like, and guess what happened? Uh, Moxley right. comes, uh, comes out and runs right. and runs. Bro, this, this is like a new heel faction, right? Moxley came out of random all offs by himself. Right. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know. What what what'd you think of this? Bro, is this the one where Moxley threw out everybody out of the ring, right? Uh, oh, no, no, excuse me. Pac ran. No, no, excuse me. Excuse me. That's later on. Pac ran, ran in with the yeah. with the hammer. With the, with the hammer, and, right. And ran, yeah. Ran because, of course, yeah. nobody can get heat. Right. Um, you know, we'll get to the other one. But yeah, I get, 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 I get. There was only one match that had heat, bro. It's like you're about to go into a pay-per-view. Right. Uh... uh Austin Proc was shown in the crowd. I, 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 let me just say this. I did like the match, by the way. Right. And But here's the thing, bro. Like, the Young Bucks, they said they have a new writer for them, too. James, some, right? Mm-hmm. Where is their heat? I don't see their heat at all. They're supposed to be disc- despicable, unlikable. Where is their heat? They don't that they're you. calling themselves Nicholas and Matthew, and they got new outfits. Where, yeah. But where, where are they getting heat? I don't understand. And, bro, what a loss of talent. In Okada, because he means absolutely nothing there. He's supposed to be a superstar, standalone superstar, I would think. And he's well, in a group that's not really in, interesting bro, right now. They have all these players in these awkward positions. Okada's still getting cheered as a baby face, huge by the crowd. And he's in a, still in a heel faction with these guys, and they're not really getting heat, right? Right. You got Willow Nightingale and the, the Chris Stavener with, with Stokely Hathaway. You got Osprey looking like an idiot because he's still like trying to be friendly with with Don Callis and these guys, and it just doesn't, you know, like. Yeah, there's so many things that don't make sense. Right, don't I mean, make sense at all. So, so let's talk about another thing that makes sense. Well, actually, this did make sense, but I didn't like the way this went. So, Taz sit in the ring with Chris Jericho. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me just get something to drink real quick because my mouth is very dry. Okay, uh, so let's continue with AEW here. So, Taz sit in the ring with Jericho in his Lionheart entrance, dressed in rest, non wrestling attire. And Hook came out dressed in his hoodie that the FT, FTW title with Jericho thanked Hook for coming out. He got booed for thanking him. Jericho said Shibata was collateral damage this week. He said he didn't think Hook was listening to him as much as he should. Jericho said some people say he's the greatest of all time and they refer themselves as a learning tree. Jericho said everyone who's listening to him has gotten to the next level. Jericho said everyone who's entered the Jericho Vortex has come out the other side a better performer, a better wrestler, a better person. Jericho said he wants that for Hook. He said he wants to get to the top of Wizard Mountain where they can breathe in the rarefied air of Jericho. <laughs> Jericho asked Hook if he was willing to put aside the animosity and sit under a learning tree. Hook said no. Taz kind of chuckled, and Hook said he doesn't need Jericho's help. Jericho told Hook, told Hook not to be stupid. Taz told him to relax. Jericho told Taz to stop. He said he was giving the kid proper guidance that Taz should have given him. Jericho said he was trying to help Hook get rid of the dead weight he's been surrounded by for his entire life, and then Taz told Jericho to calm down. Jericho told Taz to stop. Jericho told Hook that he's not as good as he thinks he is. Taz tried to speak, but Jericho pushed him into the ropes, and then Taz fell down. I got the chant on that. Then Hook dropped his mic and pushed Jericho into the corner. Jericho held the mic while Hook let, held him in the corner, and then took Jericho, told Jericho that he liked him, but he crossed the line. Hook said if Jericho wants to see how good he is, he would face him anytime, anyplace, and anywhere, and Hook told Jericho to get out of his ring. A guy in the front row held up a who booked this song, <laughs> while others in the crowd sang the goodbye song, while Jericho just kind of like, it's kind of like a, kind of like a, just kind of just walked away. What did you think about this and the, and the out of this? What did you think about the sick overall? Unfortunately, I was not a fan. Number one, when he was giving Hook advice last week, I was like, "Why are you giving advice if he has a father that right. wrestled in the business and is a commentator on the show?" Right. That was weird, right there. Right. Um, again, why did he turn heel? What did Hook do for him to turn heel? He didn't listen to him. Right. Kind of a weak thing there. Um, uh, problem with Hook is he does not look that tough. He's very thin and young looking and not that tough looking, even though he does suplexes and he's over with the crowd. I think they put a, a leather jacket on him to look <clears throat> bigger or cooler. Neither was, neither was established. Um, I really thought that what they should have done here is when Taz got in Jericho's face, Jericho beat the out of him. Hook turns him around, gets some heat on Jericho just as it looks like he's going to hit him with a suplex or something. Jericho kicks him in the 
drags the son on top of the dad, says something, gets out. He shouldn't have out like that. I did not like this segment at all for all right. the reasons I just it mentioned. Did, it did. I, I, if they're still going with Jericho being the heel here, I was like, this was a very weird way to end this segment. Right. Why didn't he like, get heat? Like, bro, there should have been something like that. This is how that. I don't know how you get there, whether it be a or whether he had a fireball again or whatever it was, right? Right. But this should have ended up with with Hook like selling maybe handcuffed to the ropes while Jericho had his dad right in front of him in the walls of Jericho. Right. That that I that, 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 that would be like I, I could right. do that too. However you get to that spot, that that's how that's the visual that that, that should have happened there. Or uh, vice versa. Hook hook in the thing with, with Taz you know, having having to sit right in front of his you know, watch watch his kid you know, happen out to the walls of Jericho. That, but this was like a very like like bro, bro he's talking about the like, like the, even the verbiage here, right? <laughs> Hook said if he, Jericho wants to see how good he is, he would face him anytime, any place, and anywhere. Bro, they just wrestled like two weeks ago. Yeah. Like what are you talking about? That's like a weird I don't understand thing. how Jericho is not reading it and saying, I don't know. Hey, I don't want to do this or I I doubt Jericho's doing this. I yeah. I can't believe that he's reading this from whoever it is, a writer, since they have writers now, and they have, they've given names. I guess Peppermint is from Monet. The guy wrote for, I guess he's writing for the Young Bucks. So Brian's in there, I think, right? Brian who? Brian Dan- uh, Danielson. Yeah, but I don't know who he's writing for. So well, well, here's- I- I'm just saying these people that are writing Specifically, for them, or yeah. if it's Tony, why they're not getting it and going, bro, this does not sound like it's good. I would change this, and this is what I would say. Well, let, let me get to this because maybe Tony has on his piece of paper that he wrote right out for the next few mu- months or however long it is. That he's looking for ahead to match. Well, okay, maybe, whether, okay, well, whether, whether, me, whether he's looking ahead to a match or not, this segment was brutal and it okay, should have been. Okay, but here's my thing: if your if the, the 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 narrative here is you want hook the baby face against Jericho the heel, right? Okay, then this segment ended atrociously. There was no heat, and the heel just out right, right. If you wanted, if you want to get there, but we may be reading the reading this wrong, right? Maybe Hook is the one that's going to end up being the heel, and Jericho's getting the baby face, and maybe that was supposed to be sympathy at the end on Jericho. Maybe I, I don't know. That's that's all. That's what I'm thinking because I got that segment. Usually, the like, booking isn't that nuanced, but right. I'll go with it. <laughs> but I'm just well, saying. That, and go ahead. Wouldn't it be because I doubt? I don't know, and I guess maybe you guys don't either. I don't know. If Tony hands out scripts like WWE mostly would, so maybe Tony yeah. gave up an outline and said, well, "I want this," and then Taz, you're going to do this, and it's all leading to this. But they have to come in and make up the verbiage, like I don't kind of like whatever it is. Form. Yeah, whatever it is, it didn't work in this. Okay, so next we got a uh, Deanna Parrot. And let me tell you, I'm sure that T- Taz and Jericho looked and said, "What is this?" And I'm sure that they probably showed it to their friends. What do you think of this? It's kind of JoJo, and I, they have enough power to get it changed. If they thought this was good, well, after watching it, I'd like to ask them if they still thought it was good. Yeah. Next was uh, Deanna Parasic is right. Oh, no, we had a sit down with um, Swerve, and she was asking him about, you know, are you a choke artist? Um, he said, Joe called him a punchy bag, a choke artist, an artist, and a parasite. Swerve said that Joe be calling him the new AW champion on Sunday and Piquet. Well, we know who wrote that. We know who wrote that par- that, that promo right. feud was called the Parasite. Right. Piquet asked <laughs> Swerve what makes him so confident that he can beat Joe, and Swerve said it's not something he should be answering to to her. Swerve stood up and removed the mic and the jacket that he would tell Joe to his face inside the ring later tonight. So then we go to Deanna Parazza and Mariah May, and she's out there with Tony Storm and Luther. And, uh, that, they keep beating this Mariah May, and I, I think there's some value in her because totally. she looks good and she's at least got some, you know, personality out there I mean, he's, he's, right yeah so uh so may went for a finisher process countered into pinning up the three count then after the match stormer in the ring and put the boost process which actually looked pretty good the, some of the girl the one thing need the girls the top girls on this show do is they do beatdowns really well yeah you know like what it's time to do this so 100 right so that's better than you the know how fast <laughs> anna went from something right, yeah. really big to yeah well, if, she's, she's second fiddle here because she stormed out of the ring and put the boost to Deanna Parazzo, and then Thunder Rosa came out and cleared the heels for the ring, and Parazzo were covered and shoved Rosa, who shoved her back. Then May pulled Parazzo to the floor, and Storm stuck up behind Rosa, and then kicked her. Then Storm set her for Storm was here, but Rosa escaped and punched her. Then Rosa put Storm in the camel clutch and then smeared lipstick all over her face. That was actually a good visual there at the end. Yeah, that, looked, that looked like 
Yeah, this was she getting did her not back. like that, and she was getting back. Well, this, this was getting her, she like a shoot a little bit, you know. This she's was back. getting her back for her wiping her face paint off last week, right? But again, every single match that they had the baby face come for a save, I would not have had the baby face come in for a save, and I would have put heat every single right. match. So Billy Gunn and the acclaimed uh, stood on the uh, Jay White, Austin Gunn, and Colton Gunn spoke with Paquette. Why called for the acclaimed and Billy Gunn to put their trios title on the line? So they put the Ring of Honor six man title line and a winner take all match times. Wow. Excited. Uh, then Billy Gunn and the claim, you know, they, they interviewed them and they stood on the interview and said, accepted the challenge. And Billy said he beat Jay White's beat man, his son since they were kids. And cast their challenge and guns to face him and Bowens in a standard tag match at Dick on Felicia. Um, this to say, bro, how long have this, did these, this angle been going on with this, these teams? Like they've already wrestled each other that, uh, months ago. Then they kind of teamed up, and now the rest of each other. It's like, bro, they like it's pretty funny. You talk about like all these dream matches they're supposed to have here, but it seems like all these all these angles circle back, and like the only, the only people they work for three, four months are the same guys. You know, and it seems like so for some ungodly reason they're pushing Shane Taylor. What's it called? Shane Taylor Enterprises or promote? What's it called? What's his group called? Joe Shane Taylor Dynasty or something like that? I believe what, it's uh, it's it's Enterprises. No, it's promotions. Shane, I'm sorry, Shane Taylor Promotions. Okay. And they keep putting Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty in the show, and then Anthony Gogo's out there, and then they're against Cassidy, and they now just have to talk about how the um, what you call it? Uh, Cassidy has no friends today, right? I guess they were hurt or something. Uh, so uh, the Cassie would t- uh, took out the the side this the Gogo and Moriarty tried to interfere, and Cassie took them out. Uh, Taylor threw a clothesline, and Cassie ducked, and Taylor threw another clothesline, put him down, and the Rockets team announced that Lee versus FCR back for Saturday's collision. While they were doing this in the ring, Cassie connected with the orange punch and scored the pin. After the match, Lee Moriarty entered the ring and put Cassie in a chokehold, which is a weird looking chokehold. You know, it looked like it was easy to escape from. And Excalibur said Rocky Marrow and Katsuya Shibata were not in the building and couldn't help Cassidy. That's what that's when it said it. Then a go go, you know, took his rolled his sleeves up and punched Cassidy one time in the belly with, with the, just a short little uppercut. And Cassie sold it like he was dead because a go was a box. What did you think? Oh, they ran, and Matt Seidel and Chris Daniels ran out to help Cassidy. But then Trent Beretta took them out with a chair on the stage. Then Beretta threw a chair at the head of Seidel for some reason. Then Beretta looked at the heels and Cassidy and then turned and walked backstage. <laughs> what did she think about this? Yeah, there's uh, this reminds oh, me. They, they, they dragged the Shane Teller promotions flag over Cassidy at the end. This they're reminds now putting over this Shane This was the only oh, match right. that. They let him get a little bit of heat, and it didn't mean anything because neither Shane Taylor means anything, Anthony Agogo means less, and Lee Moriarty means less than him. Just kind of like three slugs that they put together who probably will never win a match unless they're on collision. Shane Taylor always looks good, and he always loses, kind of like Brian Cage, who we haven't seen in a while. Um, yeah, I'm not into this at all. I didn't like anything about this. Typical o- uh, Orange Cassidy match. You know, he gets beat on, then he makes a comeback, and, and he gets a win. Not into let me this give, at all. Let me give you the first match. Okay. Uh, oh, they had a video package for Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly's story. Uh, it was actually not a bad video package to explain some stuff, so I'll give him credit for that. So then they do Will Ospreay and Claudio Castioli. Let me give you the first line of this uh, this, this analysis. Don Callis sat in on commentary because Osprey is still part of his family for reasons that make no sense to anyone. Do you agree <laughs> with that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's such a bummer. Yeah. Uh, so Osprey and Claudio, you know, having bro, everybody like I I'm not seeing Osprey as like this next level guy for the simple fact that everybody in this company has been working like Will Osprey for so long that now Will Osprey's here and his matches look like everybody else. Just a bunch of devastating moves that you know, kind of have two counts. And then, you know, it's just, just like that, that, that's his, his shtick. It's like, it's a typical, like AW Japan indie thing where the fans, this is what you deliver. It's like, if, if there was like a song that they could make the, like a play this soundtrack to every AW match would go like this. One, two, oh, one, two, oh, this is awesome. Clap, 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 clap. This is awesome. Clap, 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 clap. One, two, oh, one, two, oh, this is awesome. Clap, clap, clap. The, on, on a, on a repeat. Because that's that's what these matches. Could somebody are. put a beat to that. <laughs> we should because that's like the, the all these matches. If you if you look that that's what they look like. Devastating move one two kick out. Another devastating move one two kick out. This is awesome. This is a, the other guy reverse a devastating move kick out. Let me tell At you. The end, they, they they finally finished when they should have 
Like any one of the Osprey hit it with uh, and you friends. also forgot the other one that they used to that they use that they love to use a lot. You deserve it. You deserve right. You still but, got it. Yeah. But this match was 14 minutes and 30 seconds. And in the big picture, it made when I watch these, it looks like Claudio is like the toughest guy on on earth because he took like seven different things that could have beat him. He kicked out of all of them. And then he finally loses the end with that form, that that elbow thing that Osprey does to the back. So after the match, Hobbs, Katesha, uh, Takesha, and Kyle Fletcher attack Castagnoli while Osprey just goes to ringside. Takesha brought Castagnoli to the floor and set him up for a brain buster on the ramp, but he released it with John Moxley's team played. And Moxley cleared Takesha and Fletcher from the ring. The trainer punches Hobbs and eventually ended up at ringside. So Moxley cleared. Th- this is like the big. This is Hobbs, Takesha, Kyle Fletcher, and Osprey, the Don Cow's family. It's supposed to be the number one heel faction on the show, and Moxie just run, run them all, ran them all out of the ring, and they still didn't really explain anything. Well, why Osprey is still with them, and though they, they had, Osprey goes to the back by himself, that was the only visual that we get. That you know, yeah. whatever. What well, you- they did. They did show Osprey yelling at the Callis family, so that's probably the beginning of his baby face <laughs> turn. Right. right. Let me just say this, bro. I thought the same thing. Okay, so they had a great match. I think what separates. Uh, Osprey from the other wrestlers, Disco, is, yeah, they're all doing what he does, but he's got an agility they don't have. Ray Mysterio oh, had yeah, it. That athleticism is better, right? Yeah. Ray Mysterio had it in the day. Ricochet has it right now. Vikingo has it right now. Which you know, great. Osprey does. So, um, uh, bro, I could not believe this, what you just said. That's what got me. Okay, so Takesha's being pushed as this really future superstar. He beat Omega. He was protected. Bro, he just came in and him the other guy and then he shot Hobbs right he threw the toughest team the <laughs> baddest faction all three of them out just shot them outside of the ring just buried them bro very bad that's not how you do it and of course they can't get no heat even though it's the go home show right before the pay-per-view it's right to go, you know Mox had to come in and save the day and it's yeah. nothing against him just let him get heat so you're going right. to the pay-per-view with heat Bro, he's wrestling powerhouse Hobbs coming up, and then, then he promoted that match. It's a bit they're talking about picking. And then like, bro, let, let Hobbs he, Hobbs is out there with with all, his whole crew, and, and, and like, well, why? <laughs> it's like, dude, why does Hobbs have any chance against against Moxley? If you're like, if you're like a betting man, no, maybe not, right. I, I think oh, it I could. I think it could be done as I think it would be like a surprise. Like, wow, an upset! Look at this guy and. Maybe it's well, that's what it would be an upset that anybody could do that. That's not what we're saying. But I think the only thing I think what, what we're going to finally see is this show. Swerve wins a championship. Well, so at the end of the show, Swerve comes out and makes his entrance as company by Nana. He recalled asking how he'd beat Samoa Joe and Swerve recalled standing over Joe last week. He said Joe was quivering like a little. Swerve said Joe was afraid. And he knows that Swerve will beat him for the AW World Championship. And Swerve called out Joe. Joe makes his entrance with a group of security guards, and the guard tried to stop him entering the ring. And the swerve went up top, performed a double stomp that took out the security guards. All of them they did the bowling pin spot there, even though he did a double stomp on Joe, which that's <laughs> like you're, you're jumping off the top rope and your two feet are hitting the guy, and everybody else fell, fell down, which I guess that's how the kids like to do it these days. So, what possibly stop the ring? And Joe mocked Nana's dances while standing behind Nana, who was sending the swerve. Nana turned around and picked up in a corner of the ring until Swerve blindsided Joe. Swerve hit Joe with the house ball kick and Swerve went up top, but Joe cut him off and told him he's not that man. Then headbutted him and gave a muscle buster and held up his title belt while standing over him to close the show. But he got the heat here, but this didn't really, it wasn't done in a, you know, he should have, Joe should have put Nana in a choke, right? Swerve should have come up behind Joe and trying to like peel Joe's arms off of like, off of like, while he's choking out Nana, like come up behind him. And while he's behind him, Joe's to the back, then the back kick and kick, kick Swerve in the back. And then, then, then did his things and stuff. Like that. But like the way this, this was laid out, it's like Swerve, you know, just went up to the top rope and just got cut off. And it's like he didn't really, it's like this is a brawl. It's like Joe just got the better of it. It wasn't like any cheating or anything. I don't know. It's just like it's kind of weird how they lay these things out. It's, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, you know, sometimes. So and there's not a lot of detail like to stuff like this. But the visual picture at the end was fine with Joe getting the heat. So what'd you think? Yeah, I just didn't think this was good heat. I would have had Joe break Nana's back or something with right. construction concrete bricks that, you know, uh, to get, to get to carry and used to punch. Right. And Swerve goes into the, he goes into the ambulance. He goes, 
stay in there. I think I broke my back. Stay in there. Don't worry. He goes, just get him for me. He goes, don't worry. I'm going to dedicate this to you. As he's saying that, Samoa Joe goes into the ambulance, beats got to swerve, juices him, throws him in the ambulance with the other guy and just leaves. There you got some heat, you know, with a guy. I don't know. I just, just did not have. Did not make me want to see the match, even though the match will be good, and I think Swerve's going to go over. All right. We're going to start doing just a very small, m- minuscule bit of homework each week now from now on, because I have a segment that I want to do that you kind of uh, um, turned me on to, and I was thinking about this would be interesting for us, right? I want to do at the end of our reviews, do a top five of the week. Your five ranked, the, like the, the five, the top five guys that put on the best TV this week on, on SmackDown Raw and, uh, and Dynamite. Right. We'll start it next week because we'd have a chance, but just write them down yeah. and we'll do our top five. And every week we'll look at like how many guys are in our top five every week. All right. You know, like in stuff, I think it'd be a good way. Like, but like the remember we talked about the hits and misses thing that, right. that Cal does? Yeah, let's do something like that. All top right. five of the week now we'll do from now on, um, you know, to the top five. We'll, and that'll start next week. But that's been our uh, dynamite review. Comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, send them to k100questions at gmail.com. Keep the letters short. Boom. So we can read a grip of them. Joe, you can participate in the top five, too. Thank you. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other... Uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.